So his longtime lover was Joffrey Lawnmouth, and we now have spy photos of, and this is confirmed through the Daily Mail's spy photos on this. Here is, it says in their subtitle to the photos, we confirm this is Theo Nate as young Lenor Valarian, and a Scottish actor, I think, Sally McLeod, is credited as Joffrey Lawnmouth. So here is this couple together on screen. Here's Lenor and his lover Joffrey. Uh, they're not dressed in finery here. I don't know why they're just out. Maybe they took their armor off uh, in the, in the they're, they're in a military camp. But these characters will be on screen. And this raises a couple of issues from different angles. Now, people going, oh, they're going woke with gay characters. This was directly from the source material. They didn't invent anything. If they handle it in a way that I feel is too modern and not fitting the setting, I will mention it. Because keep in mind, gay isn't a word for them. Homosexual isn't a word in their universe. And that lead, I've made other videos on this. That leads to the whole question of, was it a mental category? That their conception of men who have sex with other men, it was different from ours. They didn't use the categories we do. I thought Game of Thrones handled Renly and Loras reasonably well in seasons one and two, that that's because seasons one and two largely stuck to the books, which didn't really stray too much either from what we would think. But on the other hand, this leads to questions of will other audiences think they're doing this the right way, that I am worried that this will turn into yet another example of the rampant objectification of homosexual men by the straight female TV audience. That once again, we're, that you're, just, you're making these two men gay, that we're going to get a bunch of hardcore sex scenes objectifying these men with the female gaze to slate the desires of, of the female fan base who are objectifying gay men just as straight men objectify men, them and don't see the hypocrisy in that. And I, I, from uh, gay people who are in the fandom who I, I have met on Twitter, that this is a, actually a big issue for them. That they're, you know, I'm really offended that gay that women keep objectifying me like this, and that they're not treating me as a character but as eye candy. And it's shameful, just shameful that we're going to have all of the, this female gaze, and we never. I'm not saying gaze, gay, g a y s. I'm saying gaze with a z. Sorry if that's not clear. But that, that is an issue with this. Then again, I am a straight man. I am a cisgendered heterosexual man. And I, even I was getting offended by like season four to five of just how much Benioff needed to see tits and ass on screen. And there was never a single gay sex scene in Game of Thrones, even between like Renly and Loris. There were romantic scenes. And I'm saying this in comparison to other HBO shows, which do have gay sex scenes. I don't know if you're allowed to show them in the act or whatever, but relative to other HBO shows, which sort of had an even mix, it was strange to see that Game of Thrones, with the characters who were established as canonically gay, like Loras, you would never really see them having sex. You'd see them leaving sex or getting ready for it, but it was strange compared to other HBO shows, and it felt like I was looking at, a, at Benny off the frat boy's porn stash, that he was not taking this seriously. So on the one hand, I felt for representation, just, I wouldn't enjoy it myself, but compared to like True Blood, compared to True Blood, I, I feel like we're watching Benny off's fantasies in this. Other end of the spectrum, I have uh, seen gay men saying over Twitter, we don't want this to be porn for women the way True Blood was where they're just objectifying once again with the female gaze, treating us as objects, this is not storytelling in a mature way. So you have to strike a balance. I'm, I'm, sum it up, I'm terrified that the pendulum will swing to the opposite extreme, and we will go from having Benioff's fantasies to objectifying fantasies by women now, and not something handled maturely. And I know I'm not a gay man myself, so it's hard for me to really talk about this objectively, but, you know, I'm trying to be sensitive. Now, episodes are filmed out of order, you understand, so throughout the last week there were multiple episodes being filmed concurrently. The big action scenes, those are being filmed by Greg Yaitani's, the ones where they were staking out pirates at low tide and there was a shipwreck and a battle scene. That was all Greg. 
the person we saw on set filming the Lenor and Joffrey lawnmouth scenes, or when they were on set, we didn't actually see them filming, but we saw them in costume, the director that was with that unit was Claire Kilner. And dear God, this show actually has female directors again. That it was an embarrassment for an Emmy-level show to go even three years without a female writer or director. Game of Thrones went five years. Its last five years, it didn't have a female writer or director. People going, oh, do that based on merit. It's an extension of Benioff's cronyism. That it just makes his cronyism obvious that they didn't have a full writing staff. Cogman and Hill were errand boys that he promoted up based on loyalty to be his lackeys. That, and it, it, by extension, there weren't any female writers, because there weren't any real writers at all. Same with directors, that they would pressure out people who could complain about them, that said that this is terrible. So it, it's an extension of his cronyism that they had such a tight, close group of loyalists around them. But it's just, I see the hypocrisy. I, I'm saying this because I'm criticizing Hollywood's hypocrisy that the Emmys had to make it a point to have this whole song and dance of praising Game of Thrones season eight at the Emmys when, by your own standards, this man hasn't had any female or black directors or writers in five years, and this is unprecedented, and you're cowards who are keeping your mouths shut. And it's the fact, it's their hypocrisy that gets me more than anything. That if they're fine with that, okay, but you are people who know what he's doing is wrong, and you're too afraid to speak out. I have, I have more content for you than the people who generally don't have a problem with this. Oh, there's three new directors this year. There's Greg Yatanis, uh, there's Sapochnik is returning, and there's two female ones. There's Claire Kilner and Gita Patel. And she's Indian, uh, so she, uh, family's from India, so she's also the first non-white director on this show. But the person we saw on set with Lenore and Joffrey Lawnmouth for this scene was Claire Kilner. So yes, we are going to have a gay male romance subplot filmed by a female director, presumably through the female gaze of the camera. And I'm hoping they handle that in a way that isn't just... The books do say that Rhaenyra enjoyed watching uh, Lenor and Joffrey disporting with each other. But then again, that's something Mushroom the Court Jester said, and Mushroom says a lot of things. We don't know if she was really a Fajoshi who, who was into... She, if she liked to watch two men going at it like that. We don't know. W will they put that in and treat that as true or not? That's, that's a question, but we were worried that, well, will they just cut all this out entirely? This is going to be in, it's going to be a big part of season one, that, that they even cast younger versions of the actors to show this is the romantic troubles that Rhaenyra and Lenor had when they were younger. It's going to be in it, now it's a question of will they do it well? We don't know. But, I mean, I haven't seen anything to upset us so far, they're just spy photos. We'll see how this turns out. I mean, I don't know if the world will accept that, you know, Lain it's, Lainor is a mixed-race Targaryen through his mother, who is also a, a gay black man. And I've even some, seen some people on Twitter, from the black community, of fans, saying, oh great, we finally got a black dragon rider and they made him gay. As if that's a bad thing, that they have, well, you have some sort of bias against that, okay, there's a black character who is also gay. Why would you discriminate against, as if that's a bit, I, I really don't. Yes, Lenore happens to be gay. There are other black characters who are also dragon riders who will show up in season two. That's the most I can say about that. Um, Lenore's mother, Rhaenys, she rides the dragon Melis. And Lenore himself has a younger dragon named Sea Smoke, while Rhaenyra has her dragon, Cyrax. And Daemon's dragon is, of course, Caraxes. So they all have dragons, and there were other spy photos where people seemed to be reacting to CGI dragons. But we weren't sure if it was Daemon's dragon, Caraxes, or Lenor's dragon, Sea Smoke. Either one I'd be happy with. Sea Smoke is cool. Um, minor spoilers here from the books. Turn this off if you truly want to remain unspoiled. I'm warning you. Spoilers from here on out. 
As we know from the prequel novella, Lenor will not live past season one. There's 30 years worth of time skips in it. He is not, no longer alive by the time the Civil War actually starts between Rhaenyra and Alice. And that's, that's 30 years later. That's 20 years after the photos you were looking at right now of young Lenor. 20 year, by 20 years later, he's dead. And his death is a major plot point for political reasons that really has nothing to do with the fact that he's gay. It's due to political intrigues. Once again, I would directly compare this to Renly Baratheon. That Renly was introduced, people were happy, oh, the king's younger brother is actually gay in this show in season one, this is good representation. And then he promptly died halfway through season two as part of a political intrigue. Not because he was gay, in many ways because he was doing something a little underhanded, that he technically usurped his older brother Stannis. Some have already, you know, Stannis was right to, you know, he's still kinslaying, but you're my younger brother and you're usurping me, and I gave you every option to surrender and you refused. What else do you expect me to do? This is betrayal. You betrayed me, not me, you. You were even willing to march an army at me. Fine, then I'll hire an assassin. So... I'm worried that there was, I don't know if there was a lot of backlash against Renly's death, because it happened in the books. We were all, anyone who read the books could just point out, guys, this is what happens. I don't know if book fans were upset that they killed off a gay character like that, but there is the trope of, oh no, you killed off your gays, and that people are upset about that. And it does seem to happen a lot that, no, we can't have a happy gay couple in this surviving the end. A lot of people die in Westeros. This is a show infamous for killing off Ned Stark in season one. So when Renly died, I think a lot of people correctly thought, well, it's like a Ned dying moment that Renly was a good enough person that the war could have ended if he lived, and then there wouldn't be a story. But that Renly's death had nothing to do with the fact that he was gay. Similarly, Lenor dies, but it's for political reasons, and it's not flippant. His death is a major story point. I mean, we're going to be making whole analysis videos about this. He isn't casually killed off. They dropped a bridge on him or something. This is a major part of the story. So we're bitter about how Benioff and Weiss, towards the end of their show, really marginalized a lot of groups. And again, I'm a straight white man, and I was getting uneasy about how they were like, when they kill off the sand day and all stuff, you do realize you just flippantly, and not even in a good way, but in a loosely plotted full of plot holes way, you flippantly killed off literally the only black woman in your entire cast. And it's not that they did it, but that after they did it, they seemed genuinely surprised that, oh yeah, that didn't occur to us. It's the, It was the obliviousness that got me more than if they had done it and knew what they were in for. It's they seemed surprised at the backlash, is what really got me that you really are living in a bubble and you don't understand that when you're portraying, I don't know, invented rape scene stuff, they were surprised at how much women and men also were upset in a general audience about you can't treat rape this flippantly or the racism of the Dorn subplot that Benioff and Weiss handled basically any minority you could name pretty badly. For that matter, they didn't even handle the white male small folk that well. They, they said, oh yeah, we didn't have time to do the suffering of the small folk in this. Or they treated Tyrion's dwarfism almost as a joke. All this other stuff. So we're hypersensitive now, but even I felt Lenor dying was sort of like when Renly died. It was part of the plot. I didn't, but I'm worried that a season one audience will react negatively to this. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments. It depends on how they handle it, that it isn't flippant, it's it's a story point. Another issue is we have barely any characterization for Lenor. Some people, it's just an outline. Some people read it and thought, oh, he's this fop, he's not a likable character. It doesn't say he was a bad person. I mean, casting descriptions we've seen say that Lenor is brave and, and fights in his father's army in the Stepstones when the Valarians are fighting pirates and stuff. We will see if they portray him negatively or as this positive character who is, well, he's gay and he can't control that, and it's affecting all of his romance, but that on a personal level he's still an honorable person. Or what is his relationship with his sons with Rhaenyra? We have very little context to go on on how they're going to play TV Lenor. And I can only leave you with, we'll have to wait and see how they portray Lenor. All I can say is, like I said, 
it isn't going to be a footnote. Whatever they do with Lane or one way or another will have major focus in season one. This will be a major storyline, for good or ill. Question now, so it's not, oh, it'll be off on the sides. It's some people will hate it uh, for different reasons. And it just, is this going to be, again, as I am not a gay man, I can't tell, is this respectful? Is this pandering to the female audience? I would like to see what a gay reviewer thinks of this. When, when every website is reviewing this in season one, like a, like Gay of Thrones, I hope they bring that back, actually reacting to, oh yeah, is this pandering or is this mature representation? We'll have to see.